Alright, so it seems that last week was a pretty weird week for me. For starters, I was bashing on Herman Cain a lot recently based upon the fact that I was researching on politicians of the morrow, which is something I rarely do. However, in this case, I was really harsh on Herman Cain. I was getting a lot of good feedback, which surprised me. And then my mom, sir, who knows nothing of politics, was actually saying, you know, there's this guy who's a lot like you politi in political ideology. Except he's a little bit more extreme because he's an atheist, I'm thinking. Alright, either my mom's a complete idiot, or... Who knows? So I actually checked this guy. He has, he's nothing like me. For starters, he's a leftist and I'm more of a middle ground libertarian. And he's kind of a progressivist. And he was very critical in regards to Herman Cain. But not in terms of policies, but rather this sex scandal, which I didn't know anything about. And I was thinking, how the fuck could Herman Cain get into a sex scandal? His face looks, he looks like Theodore Long from WWE Smackdown, the general manager. Although you guys probably won't know about that, unless you have bad taste in television like me. Okay, so, basically, there's some sort of sex scandal which you're advising us, Hell's Unicorn, not to pay any attention to since it's not going to really promote or help any of the decent politicians but and we all know I'm biased against the concept of a decent politician however in this case anyone will do better than Herman Cain you you do happen to be correct in the fact that he's a walking soundbite so I was very disappointed in the fact that I actually got a lot of good heat and something since I'm usually a heel in terms of political views but it was for the wrong reasons it was because of some thing that happened some soap opera as you've said and I was hoping that people were actually being more pensive in their political views and a little bit less satirical so I think that's what's going on right now and you are Getting onto something in terms of television, how uh, people usually watch the TV and l listen to the presidential speeches, they end up in a sort of trance because I actually, I mean, I don't listen to much of these speeches from like 2010 through this part of 2011 and late 2009, but. Now I'm listening a little bit more. I'm trying to be a little bit more attentive. And when I would hear my teachers speak about this, it's like they're drinking the Kool-Aid. I know that's a terminology that's recycled a lot, but they're like, wow, Obama has a lot of great ideas and policies. It's just that his vocabulary and vernacular make him very hard to pick up. And I do agree on what Obama says. I mean... Yeah, he has the best policies that will surely work. It's just that people aren't participating enough. Yeah, they always say it's a lack of participation, that as soon as we elect a motherfucker that we're supposed to continue on and we're fucking up because we're not continuing on with anything. No, I think the actual, in actuality it would be the opposite. If we actually participated more towards a politician's plans, like Barack Obama's, we'd be more fucked over for the reasons you've mentioned. Maybe modified a little bit and then some. And I don't think that Barack Obama's vocabulary or vernacular are hard to pick up. I think that he has a very standard vocabulary. He does use some exquisitries in his vernacular, in his 
word choice and syntax and dialectics and rhetoric in general, but these only work so far. He's not a pensive thinker. He's not philosophical in any way. He's, like many call him, a fascist. He just has nice word plays. And these are the word plays he uses to avoid heat and to make him a pretty boy, like you said. But moreover, on Herman Cain and issues that he has, I think that should focus a little bit more on Herman Cain because I haven't really put it much of an emphasis on politics in terms of parties and politicians and things of that nature. I've focused more on ideology and idiocentric politics. I need to take into account the current events and the fact that we're less than a year away from finding out who our new executioner will be. And hopefully this executioner will be the kind who's slow, painful, and not mid-paced and egregiously awful like Herman Cain. I mean, Herman Cain's one of those guys who I think, well, this guy's so fucked up, it has to work. It, he has to get elected. Only someone like him, a walking soundbite, could make the cut. And I do want to focus on him first, and then I'll move on to the other people. I'll sort of take them on one by one. I know it's not looking good for Mitt Romney. And as for Rick Perry, he did have like a bad day, and I'm aware of that. But let's see, let's look at what these guys have to say. Not just the Republicans, also the Democrats who aren't being given much attention aside from Barack Obama, and that's it. It's quite depressing, though. <sighs> Let me try again to the meat of bones, try to evaluate this in general. One. Point one. I can only receive heat in a positive manner from my Facebook fans and that rhetoric when I'm speaking against a politician who's only receiving negative heat because of something that has nothing to do with his policies. And it's a very satirical argument against him. Not very pensive, not very philosophical. It's just trying to be funny based on the stupid shit that he does and says outside of any political philosophy or strategical measures. Since this guy happens, is to Minerva as a piece of shit is to a piece of honey grilled ham or bacon. Yikes. A food analogy. Two. While people are sort of drowned and in a trance when they're watching television, it's because they figure some prestige based upon the rhetoric of the politicians. And this prestige makes it seem like they have a complicated vocabulary where they're saying things that are more complicated when in actuality, they're saying very minimalistic stuff, and they're not really putting any technicality to it. I've heard fragments of his speeches, and I'm not sure if this is due to a low attention span. Maybe they get lost after a while. I mean, I'm the kind of guy who gets people in a trance, who are the kind of guys who have degrees, so I know that society must have a lot of idiots if a lesser idiot like me I'm not well yeah I'm an idiot of course but these guys must be incompetent and three if you take into account the fact that a lot of these 
that ever since Obama got elected, there was this right wing upbringing, and now it's sort of going into the left. You're going to see that no matter which dichotomy, no matter which issues are being presented, whether socioeconomic, socio political, or in regards to political economies, you're gonna see a lot of bullshit on both sides of the dichotomy. Why is that? It's not just because we're in a in complex contemporary society where demands are going to be met with disappointments, but also because we have these politicians for eluding philosophical values, for eluding any capabilities of being pensive or trying the minimal to solve problems. The minimal. And the minimal would be presenting two or three issues which would solve some social, economic, or political issue like maybe the economy or even to a lesser extent dealing with the crime rate or something let's try to avoid the complicated issues like this big ass war or something like that let's try a small issue let's see if they can at least have the right decision on a small yet valuable issue on both sides of the dichotomy Let's see if they can solve, hmm, the crime rate. Let's see if they can deal with getting rid of laws which start black markets, which starts large criminal entities and groups that are with a collective intent to hurt people. Yeah, let's try to see if they can get rid of gang violence in general, at least 1%. Let's see them try to do that. Let's bring these federal government agencies and let's try to demote them down to a local level. So let's see if they can solve problems in the hood of New York like right now. Let's see if they can go to my hood around Manhattan. Because there's a lot of problems in Manhattan, man. I mean, I went outside and I nearly got shot in a drive-by a few months ago. Let's see if they can go over here, solve some of those issues, and then I can see if they can handle a large scale issue. Let's see if they can take this hood. And I know there's an innate le level of crime, but let's see if they can lower it just so that I can feel safe going outside again. Let's see. At night.